Hello and welcome back to Celtic Reptile and Amphibian, with today's video being the start of a new series, Herptiles Explained. The first of this series will all be about brumation, hibernation and dormancy, so please enjoy. All of the references will be in the description down below. An inactive period during winter is a process in which many temperate reptiles undergo, especially species that hail from Europe, of which Celtic keep exclusively. Ever since the 60s, the term brumation has been used to describe this, as the process is different to mammals. Despite appearing superficially similar, herptiles and mammals differ in their dormancy periods. Reptiles and amphibians are still active to some degree, sometimes being sighted basking on warm winter days. Brumation is derived from the Latin word from winter, bruma, and proposed by Wilbur Mayhew. However, hibernation, highlighted in a paper recently, can also be used too. Therefore, we prefer to use the word dormancy as this adequately describes the process in which herptiles undergo, the state of having normal physical functions suspended or slowed down for a period of time. But why is dormancy a thing? How do reptiles become dormant and why is it important to those keeping European herbs? In much of the temperate world, especially Europe, the ideal conditions herptiles need for instance warm days, relatively warm nights and plenty of food are not met for a large proportion of the year. Therefore, in response to this, reptiles and amphibians have evolved a process in which they become inactive, their physiological processes slowed or inanimated, until favourable conditions eventually resume. Without this, herps would not meet their required body temperature and which in turn allows them to hunt, breed and do reptile things. To begin with, the herp will notice that the photo period the length of the day, will decrease and thus infer the onset of winter. In some species, the parietal eye, which is a gland on top of the head between the actual eyes, monitors the photoperiod, hence regulating the circadian rhythm of the animal. The parietal eye is absent in all chelonia, however. In response to this, herps seek adequate shelter, such as log piles, to avoid the cold. After a few weeks, oxygen uptake reduces, and the whole metabolic rate of the animal lowers, meaning less energy is used. In the common lizard's case, glycogen, built up since July, which is stored in the liver, is initially used in respiration. However, as glycogen only forms 3% of the energy store, when this is used up, the lizard uses fat as its metabolic energy source, which makes up a substantial 10%. Therefore, we recommend in feeding high-fat insects such as waxworms during the weeks leading up to dormancy to help maintain fat stores. Now, Brumation is important to European herp keepers for two reasons. Firstly, dormancy is a natural and necessary process for these animals and without it they can suffer a reduced lifespan. Therefore, keepers who house their animals inside, it's often advised to give your animal a cool period or artificial dormancy. This can be achieved by firstly switching off all heating elements and reducing the length of the day which the lights are on in the enclosure. Then after a few weeks of that, the animal can be removed, placed in a smaller container packed with a suitable substrate, such as aspen, sphagnum moss or leaves, and put into a cool area, such as a shed, garage or fridge. We find that the optimum temperature for most species during winter dormancy is about 5 degrees Celsius. Always check on your animal during winter. After an adequate dormancy, follow this procedure, but in reverse. Humidity is also important. Too low and the animal will wholly dehydrate. Too much and the animal could risk a respiratory infection. Of course, amphibians will require a more humid threshold due to their semi-permeable skin. In the UK, where Celtic is based, we find that it often becomes too wet during the winter. So we may cover up some hibernacula, albeit much of the environmental conditions outdoors are self-regulatory. Secondly, brumation is necessary for breeding. The changes of the daylight hours and temperature beginning in the autumn, stimulates the release of follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, from the pituitary gland near the brain. FSH ripens over in the ovaries of the females and triggers the production of sperm in the testes, known as spermatogenesis. Without this, a necessary mating response is usually not observed in many species, although there are exceptions such as Mediterranean geckos which do not require a cool period. Other species, such as freshwater turtles, enter dormancy in a different way. Many, such as the European pond turtle, bury into the sludge at the bottom of a water body. Here, their metabolism reduces and must, as oxygen is less prevalent. 
However, anoxic management means that the glucose is more readily used up instead. Turtles are masters of this form of dormancy, unlike terrestrial snakes and lizards. Most turtles, in fact, are extra pulmonary, absorbing oxygen without lungs, usually via the cloaca. Many species in Europe also absorb oxygen through the skin. The heart only beats to supply vital blood to a few organs, with fat being utilised when oxygen is available in sufficient amounts so that it can be oxidised. Amphibian species also have an interesting adaptation to the cold. To avoid harmful freezing, they raise their blood glucose levels to act as an antifreeze agent. The provision of the ability to hibernate or have some winter dormancy is one of the freedoms for truly ethical keeping. For eons, herps freely brew mate, so it is only ethical to allow them to do the same natural behaviour in captivity as we believe, and so do many others, that following the wild as a model for sound, captive care is the direction in which herpetoculture should head. With all this in mind, as keepers of these species, we need to understand that a winter dormancy is crucial to ensuring good husbandry. Therefore, when outdoors, we need to facilitate for this need by providing suitable places for herps to brewmate. We will cover how to create a hibernacula in a later video, so stay tuned. I would like to thank everyone for watching this video. Please like, subscribe for more. And from all of us to all of you, have a wonderful day. Thank you.